Hi, it's Chantelle here from Five Refic. In this week's video, I want to talk to you about knitting needle and crochet hook gauges, these guys, and all the different million styles and shapes and prettiness in between. Now, some of you know, I am pretty prolific on social media. I jump around, I read lots of things, I throw my opinion out left, right and center. It's kind of what I do. But one thing I've noticed is the discussion on these particular circle gauges um, is that some people say that you can't use them for crochet hooks and some people say that you can to the point where some businesses sell them as knitting needle and crochet hook gauges. And then there's people who jump up and down swearing black and blue that you can't use them. That's technically not totally incorrect but it's also not totally correct so to understand this more we need to understand crochet hooks more so i've got two distinct groups of crochet hooks here now you're probably thinking um, or having your own opinion as to why different hooks were banded together but i had them banded together today specifically because they are different shapes so Something you need to understand about crochet hooks is they are not all made the same way. And we're not even just talking mass manufactured versus handmade like those gorgeous furls hooks, but I'm talking the actual way they're created. So what you need to understand is there's two main distinctive shapes and that is inline versus tapered. Okay, so the first thing we need to understand is the anatomy of a hook. Okay, so we have, I'm gonna use a pointer. We have the tip, the head, the throat, the shaft, the thumb grip, and the handle. We have our hook here, and this particular hook is the inline hook, or otherwise known as a bait style hook. And it is the tip here is the narrowest point, but the rest of it, is the same width all the way down. It doesn't taper in, it doesn't adjust. And you'll notice that it cuts in, like it cuts through here and it gets up to the correct stitch width. So this is in this area here is where you need to be getting your stitches if you want. So this is an eight mil hook. If you want an eight mil width on your stitch, you've got to pull it past here and up to here. Okay. So this is the in line hook. Okay. And then we have the, I'll grab a big one so we can see it, but this is a tapered hook. Now you can see that this, it actually kicks up a little bit here. It's not flat, it kicks up. And then it's also quite narrow and the head pokes up more. Now, the reason we're talking about this is because some hooks actually fit in these round gauges that are gorgeous. Um, and some only fit into these slide on gauges where you don't have the full cut. Now, so personally, I think it's important to have both kind of gauge because I like both kinds of hooks. Some people are very specific about the hooks they like, but all these hooks, these are all my hooks. I got this particular slide on gauge from Amazon. I'll pop an affiliate link down below. If you click it and buy something, it actually help. I get a slight commission at no extra cost to you, and it helps the channel create more videos. Okay, so we've got this six mil hook. It is a tapered hook. The head kicks up a little, um, and it goes narrower before it gets to the shaft. Okay, so I'm going to grab the six mil here and it fits in there snug and nice. Let's grab the six mil circle from the from Shepherdess Aussie Handmaid's beautiful cat on a moon knitting needle gauge. Now, unfortunately, it won't go through. Now, if with this particular hook, I can go through from the other end and see that yes, up until the thumb grip, it is six mil. I can't test here, um, but that's a fairly good indication that it's probably close to six mil. This is because it's a tapered or boy style hook. The head is not in line with the body, therefore it's not going to fit through. Now, I will say sometimes they do, but generally speaking, they don't. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to try one of my trusty Chiao Gu. I've got an 8mm bamboo here in the 
the um, inline hook, okay? So we've got an eight mil. So it will go, with the eight mil? There it is. It will slide just nicely into the eight mil slide there. Will it go into the eight mil hole on here? Beautiful, look at that, see? And I don't have to worry about trying to get it from the other end. Now, you know, some people are like, we'll just do it from the other end. But if you've got a soft grip hook, like one of these ones from Clover, or if you've got a tulip hook, or if you've got um, one of the Chow Goo metal head bamboo hooks, you can't do it from the other end because it's got the handle. So this is why it's important to understand the tools that we use. We don't just have one maker out there making the same thing. As a matter of fact, some makers make inline and tapered heads. And that's a little unusual, but it does happen. This is just one of these many issues that people discuss and talk about in their way um, based off information they've heard from other people or from even having tried popping a tapered head into one of these styles of um, the fixed hole circulars they'll be like well then no you can't use a crochet hook on them but the answer is you can use some crochet hooks on them I highly recommend getting your hands on both the fixed circular because it's really good for knitting needles and and also the inline hooks and people like Nikki from Shepherdess Aussie Handmade who make these stunning gorgeous things for us to play with and to hang off our project bags and what have you we can use them for knitting needles and for our inline hooks but if you prefer the boy style hooks or the or the tapered heads I recommend you go and get yourself one of these slide on gauges because this means you'll be able to do both styles of crochet hooks. So that's it for today's talk on tools. I'm going to grab my little soapbox and push it to the side. Let me know your opinion on, on the different types of tools. And if you can't message here on YouTube, I've created a little place for us over on Facebook. We have our own group called Fibrific Fun Zone. So you can click and ask to join that group as well. Please click like if you liked it, hit subscribe if you haven't done so already, and let me know your opinion in the comments down below. It's time for you to fill your universe with fibre fun. Off you go. I'll see you next time. Bye.